Hello, this is Deborah with Redirecting. Now, apparently, the Nigerian army has embraced some of Trump's words to justify killing protesters. This is what happens when you have a bunch of rhetoric coming out of the mouth of someone who is supposed to be the leader of the known world. Here in the U.S., his words are justified constantly. People are constantly justifying the words that come out of Trump's mouth. And as you see, it reaches even to the continent even to the continent where they will take out or have such brutal killings. This is amazing to me that this is the outcome of hearing Trump's words. So it's almost as if basically what that says is people, even on the continent, look to Trump for direction and how to do things and handle situations. Now, I'm going to read an article, but apparently um, they're looking at or listening to the rhetoric that he's been spouting off against the so-called caravan that is um, headed towards the the border out of Mexico. And so they're listening to that rhetoric because he's just really amping up and angry about the caravan who hasn't even reached anywhere near. They're more than a thousand miles away from the border. But he's selling, sending the military down there and so those words inspired the Nigerian army to do such a thing. OK, I'm going to read some of the article here to give some more background on exactly what is happening or what they're claiming has happened. The Nigerian army appeared to adopt words used by President Trump this week to justify their own use of deadly force in a crackdown against Muslim protesters in a tweet which has since been deleted, the Nigerian army shared a video of Mr. Trump's ominous warnings to migrants traveling in a U.S. bound caravan that if they throw rocks, U.S. troops will respond with lethal force. They captioned it. Please watch and make your deductions. So again, let me just break away from the article real quick. Donald Trump stated that if they, meaning the caravan, throws rocks, that the U.S. military will respond with lethal force. Now, many of you already know that in that caravan are also children, women and children. So they're basically saying that if, if they so much as throw a rock, in which who could ever verify, they can simply say, oh, they started throwing rocks and so we protected ourselves with lethal force. But you can easily say that someone threw rocks just to spark the kind of reaction that he wants or that he's promoting. Okay, back to the article. Nigeria's military and police forces are accused of killing dozens of Muslim protesters and arresting hundreds of others, the BBC reports. Facing global pressure over the fatal shootings, the Nigerian army, the largest component of the Nigerian armed forces, tweeted the Trump video on Friday, but later deleted the post. So they wanted to get rid of the evidence that they were charged up by number 45. Okay. Mr. Trump made the remarks at the White House Thursday saying of the migrants, they want to throw rocks at our military. Our military will fight back. We're going to consider it. And I told them, consider it a rifle. When they throw rocks like they did at the Mexico military and police, I say, consider it a rifle. So li listen, he's speculating Already, number 45 is speculating. I'm breaking away from the article again. He's speculating that these people are coming to the border and they're going to just start throwing rocks. That's a death wish. Why would they throw rocks at people with guns? Anyone can say, just like I stated before, anyone can say that, oh, they started throwing rocks at our military. They started attacking our military with rocks. And so this is why we had to open fire on them. Anyway, the Nigerian Director of Defense Brigade General John Agum told the BBC the tweet was in reaction to Amnesty International's damning investigation released on October 31st that found excessive force by soldiers and police led to the killing of at least 45 supporters of the Islamic movement in Nigeria over two days. Samantha Power, former U.S. Ambassador of the United Nations, called it sickening. 
The Nigerian military's official Twitter account refuted the report, claiming it acted in self-defense and was only responsible for six deaths and seven injuries. Okay, let me break away from the article again. So this is what I said. Those with the guns, those with the gun, the heavy artillery, they can always say that they acted in self-defense if someone's throwing rocks. Who is going to prove them wrong? Who's going to prove them wrong? Because those in power, I don't care, care whether it's on the continent in Africa, Nigeria, or those here in America or in other regions of the world, those in power can present whatever narrative they want to the world. Especially in an area where people may not have uh, cell phone recordings to even refute what they're saying. Now, it's quite possible that the people in Nigeria may not have had any type of way to record what was actually happening so that they can show it to the rest of the world. It's possible they did. But most of the time, you're only going to see what those that are in high positions are putting forth to the world. And again, someone throwing rocks, you're going to use. OK, and see, that is the rhetoric from number 45 being used to justify this. So now I'm going back to the article again. The United States Embassy in Nigeria expressed concern over deaths resulting from the clashes between the Nigerian security forces, issuing a statement urging Nigeria's government authorities to conduct a thorough investigation of the events and take appropriate action to hold accountable those responsible for violations of Nigerian law. Okay. Yes, the American embassy in Nigeria. See, it amazes me. There's another thing. They have an embassy in all of the most important regions around the world. Okay. And they want to pretend like they're sticking their head in for peace. Do they really care about that? Do they really care about that? It's all a smokescreen. The world over is in chaos right now. I don't care where you go. You have people who thinking who are thinking that we're going to leave the U.S., go to Africa, and there's going to be peace and harmony waiting for us. You have those in Africa trying to get the hell out of Africa to go anywhere else but Africa. I mean, in our dialogue dealing with Africa, we've had a lot of Africans reach out to us and explain why they were leaving and why they had to function abroad to even be successful with their businesses. We've had those in Africa who are telling us of the violence that goes unchecked all the time. And then we see the same thing here in the U.S. Violence goes unchecked or excused all the time. Every region of the world, just about, is feeling the effects of wickedness. And so we think we can just run from this place to that place. Of course, there are places that are better than others. Here in the U.S., you have cities that are safer than others, states that are better than others. I'm sure in Africa, there are places that you can go that are better and safer than others. In um, the U.K., in Canada, South America, I'm sure there are places that are better than others. But to pretend like you're just going to pick up and go to some place and that you're not going to experience anything. Well, the scripture talks about how Babylon is going to cover the world and the whole world is going to feel the effects of the fall. It's ridiculous to think that you're going to escape the judgment of Yah or his plan. Okay. There are things that are set aside for the righteous that we're not going to have to seek out ourselves. It's not going to be on our own dollar that we will be rescued from anything. So let me get back to the article real quick. But before I do, the, the, your own dollar. Many of you think that you can, if you can afford to escape, then you're good. So basically, then we would have to find a scripture in the Bible that states that if you are too poor to afford to be able to flee or move or run, then you just hit. A lot of our people are forgetting that. Yes, you might be able to afford to pick up and go to another region. But what about the millions who can't even afford to move across the city? Would the Most High be righteous to make it to where it's only those who can afford to do certain things? And those that are in jail, those that are senior citizens, those that are single moms or living in poverty, homeless on the streets, 
can't afford to even move to another city or they will just be left behind because they can't afford to flee. So you have to revisit what you think you know in scripture when you start spouting these things off. Okay, let me get back to the article here. <clears throat> Members of IMN have been demanding the release of their leader, Abraham Zagzaki, who has been in custody for 34 months, the BBC reports. Nigerian police arrested 400 members of the Shia Muslim sect after days of deadly protest in the capital of Abuja that began on Saturday. In Thursday's speech, Mr. Trump said any rocks thrown at the military will be treated like a firearm. Anybody throwing stones, rocks, like they did in Mexico and the Mexican military, Mexican, pol Mexican police, where they badly hurt police and so soldiers on Mexico soil, we will consider that a firearm, he said. When a reporter asked him about this, the president said the U.S. military should consider it a rifle. Asked about the president's remark, remarks, a Pentagon spokesman said, we will not discuss hypothetical situations or specific measures within our rules on the use of force. But our forces are trained professionals who always have the inherent right of defense. Okay, so as you see, the rhetoric has reached the continent and is being justified as protection. Now, we don't know all of what is going down with this or going up with this. All we know is that you now have those in other areas using the rhetoric to do what they want to do. Now, I didn't see anywhere in the article where they said the protesters were using guns or anything of the sort. Now, the protesters were using guns. I can certainly understand a show of force such as this. But anything else, if they were just using rocks or if they weren't using anything at all, because did they even say they were using rocks? I will have to go back through the article to see if they were even, use, even using rocks or if they were just simply protesting. Wow. Okay, well, this is my, my take on this story because, again, number 45, um, he's even being called out for what happened in Pittsburgh at the Jewish synagogue. When you get people all amped up with hatred, things happen. That's my take. Shalom, family. sure to ring the bell to be notified of new uploads on this channel and also comment, share, like, and subscribe.